like, subscribe, and share to Voices of Linden TV. Welcome to another edition of the Let's Talk Show. I'm your host, Andrew James, and today I'm pleased to have with us in studio by Zoom, Miss Idel and Miss Enid Ocasio. Miss um, Chinnery is the president and CEO of Best Leaders Consultancy. I am so glad to welcome today in studio, Miss Chinnery. And thank you for having me and um, one of our consultants, Enid. We are happy to be a part of your program. Very good. Ms. Ocasio, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me as well. I'm excited and looking ready to just move forward. Very good. Welcome aboard. So nice to sit down with you and have a conversation. But before we get into the conversation, can we just open it up a little? Ms. Uh, Chinnery, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Okay. Well, I am actually from Guyana, Escribo Coast. I was born on the Escribo Coast uh, of Guyana, South America. And I relocated to the United States at the age of 15. So I actually attended a high school in the US, Brooklyn, New York, um, starting from the age of 15, 11th grade, and then moved on to um, Brooklyn College where I completed my bachelor's degree in political science and sociology. And after that, I went on to Fordham University where I studied adult education, human resources, and leadership development. And um, from there on, I did a lot of community work and community services. Um, I also worked as a manager in a hospital setting. I was also a consultant and a health educator in the community, dealing with a lot of issues, health issues in our community, substance abuse issues, um, mental health issues in our community. I um, started Best Leaders Consulting, of course, as a business in 2001. And I also work um, for the New York City Department of Education um, for going on five years now. I am Very also good. married and a mother of three children, Very two good. boys and a girl. Excellent. Let me jump on Ms. Ocasio. That sounds like a very uh, nice name, but I don't know that Ms. Ocasio is necessarily from Guyana. Ms. Ocasio, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? <laughs> Hi. Yes, absolutely. Thank you again for having me. And yes, my last name is actually from the origin of um, Spain. However, my parents are from Puerto Rico. Um, and so there's a little history there between you know, the Latin countries in Spain and things of that nature. But yeah, so I was reared, I was born and reared here in the United States in um, Brooklyn as well. And I went to school, uh, Catholic school, one through eighth. I went to high school, went to college in John, at John Jay. Um, I achieved my criminal justice bachelor's there. And then from there, I actually, my aspirations were to become a lawyer, an entertainment lawyer at that. However, there's this thing called life that sort of came interrupting things around. Um, and so I just continued with the vision. Law is my passion. I really do like um, to just learn more about what our rights are, what should we do, where should we go, how should we go about it. And so therefore, I just moved on to my master's at Walden University for public administration. I have been in the public arena in the sense of public service for 27 years now. And I have taught employment law for 13 years and I'm going on my seventh year now into actually instructing on the area of domestic violence awareness and all its aspects of it as well. Very good, but nice I'm story. I like the Puerto Rican and the Guyanese plan very, very <laughs> good. And you guys coming together and integrating your education and your training to create what uh, we're calling today as Best Leaders Consultancy. Let's get right into the nitty gritty of things. Um, I'll start with Ms. Chinnery. Can you tell us exactly what you're offering at, at Best Leaders Consultancy, please? Okay. 
So Best Leaders Consulting is a program management consulting firm that is based in New York City. So we specialize in program development, staff development, marketing, conference, and events planning. We provide services to many different kinds of businesses, non-for-profit businesses, government agencies, uh, healthcare uh, organizations, private industry uh, organizations, just e including faith-based organizations. So we provide a wide range of services in those areas of program development, staff development, and like I said, marketing, conference, and event planning to help organizations meet their need for growth, productivity. Very good. Um, any major project you're offloading now? I mean, I know COVID is happening. A lot of uh, a lot of organizations are changing. Um, is there anything you have that uh, target specifically to the the, the COVID uh, pandemic that you're doing right now in your um, in your consultancy? Yes. So because of COVID, COVID shed a lot of light to a lot of problems that we have in our society. Not that they're now emerging, but these problems were there before. But COVID shed a light to a lot of racial disparities and inequities across the board in the workplace, in, in terms of healthcare, you know, so many different areas of disparities and inequities. And because of these problems that have, you know, come out into the light, we have had to expand our services to meet the need and address the need that are impacting our society. So one of the new initiatives that we have implemented, which we are going to introduce to you in this discussion, and that's why I have Enid here with me. She is one of our most senior consultants that's experienced in this area for many, many years of dealing with these kinds of issues in, in, in the employment world. So Enid, I would say she, as she also introduced herself before, and she talked about her legal experience, she's very um, versed in employment laws. Um, she provides constituents, you know, under Best Leaders Consulting as a consultant, she provides constituents information and guidance on their rights concerning workplace disparities, sexual harassment, and retaliation issues. She is able to also define and discuss employees' legal rights as it concerns reasonable accommodations, which we know differs from state to state. So there are a host of information that we have within our consulting firm that can address many of these disparity issues that we're facing in our society. And now I would have Enid talk a little bit more in depth about the services that she provides under Best Leaders. Sure, yes, thank you very much. Um, so basically it's really sitting down with an organization and seeing where their um, policies lay, what is it that is put into place as far as rules and regulations and how are they following the laws? And if there has been any um, lack of therefore for following laws and putting things into place for employees to feel safe in a work environment, that's what we will review. And then that's what we will enhance. So we'll provide um, the rewriting of perhaps maybe their policies, rules, and regulations, but alongside that, also staff development. And so therefore, giving them the training, giving them the guidance as to what the laws are, and every state has their own laws. So therefore, being guided by what their state laws are, and what the requirements are for their organizations in order to avoid any litigations concerning employment discrimination, sexual harassment, retaliation. If an employee is still able to do the job that they were hired to do, how are we able to be able to provide them with a reasonable accommodation so that that can be met as well? 
So it's a lot of it's a lot of going back and forth with the organization leaders, their human resources departments, um, and just to make sure that everybody's um, rights are being tended to, as well as the laws are being abided by. And that's correct. Uh, mm -hmm. Very nicely said. Um, are, are you providing services just in the United States or are you open to be, you know, consultancy around the world in terms of providing in Guyana and Puerto Rico, perhaps some in yes. Canada? That's a very good question, Andrew. Our services go beyond the United States. It goes internationally as well. Very good. So, um, yes. Quite a bit of information there to digest. Then, but uh, can you tell me from through your lens, how has COVID-19 affected your business? Wow. Well, COVID-19 has affected our business in a very huge way because we are used to having interaction face-to-face -face with our clientele. We're used to having conferences and events and going out and meeting people and talking to people. And I'm not, not on just one-on-one, -on -one, but a lot of people in a room. And because of all of the events, halls were shut down and a lot of locations, you know, a lot of businesses went out completely non-existing anymore. Um, we've had to turn a lot to technology instead of our face-to-face -face interaction. And Enid would know this because Enid has been a part of a lot of Best Leaders Consulting events where we are used to going out and doing presentations and, and workshops and vending and you know meeting people and shaking hands and talking to people, mm -hmm. interacting, uh, demonstrating our products and our services to people. None of that we were able to do in the past, I would say, um, year or two since COVID hits, actually. So mm -hmm. it's more like meetings on Zoom, talking on the telephone, or, you know, and we're trying now to break out of that and try to utilize technology and see as the states are now opening up back, the countries are now opening up back, how we can get this information across to the public. Excellent, very nice to said. Mr. Cassie, I know you're sitting there smiling, looking all pretty. I have a few tough questions <laughs> for you. I think okay. it's, it's your turn to see. Um, I want you to tell us why is it important for employers to use your services? Well, once again, it's very important due to the fact that um, organizations get hit with a lot of litigation, uh, especially if they feel, if it is found that it is the organization that it is at fault for whatever discriminating um, factors are occurring under their roofs, in their premises, at their locations. And so therefore they they're the ones who have to create a safe environment for an employee to be able to come in and do what they were hired to do. And so therefore, if the employee feels that there is um, any uh, unequal treatment towards them due to perhaps maybe someone's actions or maybe because of someone's po or their organizational policies, that has to be looked into. Uh, because again, laws still have to protect not only the employer, but the employee. And so having that equal balance, you know, equally balanced is very important. And so that is why it's important for organizations to follow what the law says, but not only to follow, but to have things in place so that once again, their employees feel safe to wanting to come into work. Uh, it, it goes right with the term, um, you know, a, a happy employee is a productive employee. Yeah, and I want to add to what yes. Enid is saying is because a lot of employees don't even know their rights. You know, a lot of times they work right. for organizations where they don't even have an employee manual that will spell out what the laws are, what their rights are. And for them to even sign off on that handbook, you know, it's called an employee handbook where, you know, mm -hmm. organizations should have an employee handbook that all employees are trained on the laws, all the rules, the requirements of their jobs, regulations, know what their rights are, and then sign off that after they're being trained on those subject matters. Also, 
supervisors and managers should have manual of their own, you know, way of operation and how they are supervising and managing their team and the work. Uh, and a lot of times you find organizations, they don't even have that. Not even managers know they're right. And one of the things that I think is another big issue is even employee evaluations. You know, there has mm -hmm. to be systems of accountability to evaluate your employees work and assess your employees work so that they could even, you know, be a part of that system for promotions and being rewarded for their work, you know. So there's so many intervention tools that they need to have in place to prevent disparities and discrimination. And if those things are not in place, then anything goes. Exactly. And that's when you have, like Enid is talking about, opportunities for people to suit the organization. <laughs> very good. Very good and very good. Ms. Okasi, I'm going to ask you a question. Well, through your lens, what does zero tolerance mean? Zero tolerance. Zero tolerance is... Um, there are no exceptions. You commit a wrongful act according to what is written, indicated either by law, rules, policies, regulations. Um, there are repercussions and it can ultimately cost an individual their employment. Um, and alongside that, any civil litigation from an individual you know, from an outside individual where that, that person perhaps may have violated their rights. So zero tolerance is there are repercussions for an act that you may take that either violates laws, rules, um, regulations, and policies alongside personal civil litigation by an individual who has also been violated because of an action that perhaps an individual have met, you know, you may have taken against an individual. Um, we have a lot of organizations around the world that have policies. It's, it's a fact. And I guess this is the, where we're, this is one of the ways where best leaders consultancy can help to ensure that um, you are in compliance. And that's, that's what I'm getting from uh, both of you ladies. Uh, you're here to provide support, ensure that your policies and procedures are current and update. And obviously, compliance is a big word. Compliance is a big issue. Um, this, mm -hmm. So recently, I, I read an article where by McDonald's, um, Canada, and USA, they're rolling out a policy on harassment. So this is something that mm -hmm. all organizations are talking about, not just small or big organizations. I think because of, like you said earlier, with some... Um, Cheering. Um, because of this pandemic, a lot of people were acting differently, you know, um, having problems at home and they're taking it in the work and vice versa. Um, employees are having problems at work and they're bringing it home to their own families. And, 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 and I guess this is a good opportunity for employers to get the training, uh, to equip themselves in a leadership role to reach and be able to, to deal with these issues. Um, can, can I ask you a little bit, bit more, um, if you can tell us um, some of the, the trends that you're seeing now in terms of um, what effect this COVID pandemic has been having on employees in the workplace. And I'll, I'll bounce that out from Mr. Cassio if I may, please. It's causing a lot of stress, it's causing a lot of uh, just absentee and tardiness is a lot of, of, of an issue. It's causing concerns as to whether they are safe being around other people. Uh, so you know that COVID did cause a lot of organizations to shut down, but to work from home. So it's becoming, you know, now that things are some, somewhat kind of sort of getting back to the normal, let's say. And so people are still scared. They're, they're scared of, uh, you know, they may have lost family members, friends, neighbors who they were close with. And so they're, they're still in fear. They're fearful of catching um, the virus or if perhaps giving the virus to someone because they may have had it already. So there, it's just causing a lot of, it's causing a lot of fear. It's causing a lot of doubt. 
um, to the point where uh, organization they, they are questioning their organizations if it is still if it is safe. You know, if work has still been being able to be delivered from an outside environment, you know, is there a really a need to have to go back into an institution yes. building and things, right? Yes. So there's, there's concerns as for safety. And, yeah, and, and I can testify to that being in because I also work for the city and a lot of um, my coworkers in the city have become um, comfortable working from home. Um, they're able mm -hmm. to get their work done at home effectively, efficiently. So they really don't see the need as to why they should go back into the office setting. You know, a lot of um, a lot of employees said that you know they feel safer being at home than going into the office set, um, off, office setting to work. Mm -hmm. if they're concerned about ventilation. You know, there are a lot of things. Um, you know, some offices employees are sharing one desk. Uh, two employees are sitting at one desk space with two computers in one cubicle area because of limited uh, space. So, you know, they, but again, there are also a lot of restructuring that's going on in the office setting as well. So they're trying to make provisions to accommodate a more safer work environment. So they definitely will not be going back to doing things the same way that they were doing before. COVID changed the face of that. Mm -hmm. So we will never go back to the two person in a cubicle kind of deal anymore. So uh, now branching out into more locations and expanding in different areas and some working at home at certain times, some going in the office. So a lot has changed due to COVID and the way we um, will be working. For me personally, um, working in the city, we haven't gone back into the office setting as yet, but I know that there are uh, construction that's going on, different projects that they're working on to make it a safe environment for employees. Very nice to say. We're just pushing up against time here. Um, well, just, just in closing, um, Miss, uh, let, me, let me post this to Miss January. In terms of turnaround time, if I were to contact your um, consultancy form, what is the turnaround time um, like? And if for someone wanting to get in touch with you, are you available? Or you have a website and what's your phone well, number? How do they get in touch with you? Well, I'm always available. I'm always checking my email as far as for messages or answering my phone, text messages. Um, turnaround time is basically if you get in to me within a day, um, your need will be addressed. Uh, you will be put on to a consultant uh, to address your need, your specific need. Very good. Just uh, just in closing, uh, Ms. Ocasio, anything you want to say just in closing? Um, we are ready and willing and able to help anyone that may have any questions, comments, concerns. Um, you know, if if it's something that you would be interested in wanting to have at your organization, by all means, we, you know, we will work it out and see how we may be able to help. Or if you just need the guidance to be able to get the corrective action or to put something into place to, you know, being in compliance and uh, fitting with the law, we, we will guide you all the way. We will be there for you. We will even provide the tools for them to help them create the manuals that they need um, for their employees and for their managers, not only just providing the training, whether they want the training to be done at their location, whether they want uh, it to be done on Zoom, or they want the training for us to curtail the location, we are open to work with all the organizations to meet their particular need. And it doesn't even matter. It might be just, you know, they want training for one employee, two employees. We will meet them at their need, wherever they are in their organization. Very good. Uh, a lot of companies are offering the first hour for free. Is that something uh -huh. that you offer at your firm? Well, we don't charge for consultation. We just charge for providing the service whatever circuit it is. When I, um, what I say by consultation, I'm talking about if you should call me on the phone and talk to me and I you know, give you some counselor advice on the phone for 30 minutes and a half an hour, we don't charge for that. 
we charge for the service that we actually provide for uh, going okay. in and delivering the training or the tools and those things. We charge for that. Excellent. Nicely put. Very good. Um, ladies, I want to thank you very much for joining us today on the Let's Talk show. Um, Best Leaders Consultancy, hit them up. Uh, their information will be available. And, uh, they're on Facebook. They're at uh, their own site. And Miss um, uh, Chinnery is always available to take your call and talk to you about more about services that are available uh, through our Best Leaders Consultancy. On behalf of everyone at the Let's Talk show, I want to take this opportunity to thank you very much for being a part of the show, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you very much, and stay safe.